Welcome, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Just for even having enough interest in this to give it a click. I am one half of your hosts, Drake Riggs, MMA writer for BJPen.com, fan-sided, MMA Today, and SureDog, formerly, so not anymore, but once upon a time. My co-host is the owner and CEO of Strong Snacks, Cameron Crawford. Uh, also one of my best friends, otherwise I wouldn't be doing it with him. Strong Snacks is a protein gummy company that you can check out by going to strongsnacks.com. And trust me, even though I'm super biased, you know, because I'm really good friends with them, they are a fantastic product and several fighters have supported them, such as our guest today and even the likely next middleweight title challenger, Kelvin Gastelum, among others. This is the writer and the kid. I know... I know what you're thinking. That sounds very similar to another podcast, and we will talk about that later in this episode. Therefore, the title is subject to change because, yeah, it's very similar, obviously. Cameron and I will go in, um, more into deeper detail about ourselves, etc. in later episodes, but for our very first one, this one, we wanted to start out with a bang, so we brought on former LFA champion and current UFC bantamweight, Ricky Simone. Apologies for the nasals. <laughs> for our podcast, we don't really want to uh, have a setup, if that makes sense. So obviously, MMA will be talked about every week, but we won't limit ourselves to just that. We will talk about anything and everything, because that's what people do when they hang out and talk, you know? So, anyway, you should get the gist. It's just what it's natural. Uh, sorry about that again. I am always available and open to questions, so please, 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 please feel free to ask about things or offer up suggestions. I was planning on doing a live Twitter stream um, prior to this episode to get some questions from you guys uh, for Ricky, but we were kind of in a time crunch, which you'll probably find hilarious because of our pretty basic setup, which you'll see in a sec. But hey, you gotta start somewhere. So, without further ado, everybody, Ricky... Simone. <laughs> well, cheers, mate. Cheers. cheers. Mm. No, no. <laughs> that was really good, actually. The man of the hour, Ricky Simone. It's here, episode one, guest number one. <laughs> How you doing, man? <laughs> Episode one, I'm excited. Ready for the name? Guess. Oh yeah, we haven't haven't told him the name yet, so you tell me. You thought of it, so <laughs> the writer and the kid, baby. <laughs> the writer and the kid. Yeah, yeah. Uh, did you guys uh, hear uh, <laughs> that new podcast Jake's doing yet? No. no. Is it? It's called the writer and the fighter. Oh no. <laughs> Wait, for real? Dude, yeah. Oh, I have, yeah, I think I saw something about that <laughs> just, Why did you say something? Like, uh, they just came, I think they just, they, they just did their second episode. They just released who's the, the who's writer? Um, Dave... Golden? Okay. Dave Golden and I think Jake, they're doing it together. Jake, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dave, I, I think I get Dave Madden and Dave Golden. Okay, yeah, yeah. They're, oh, yeah. Well, Whoever's the Oregon Sports. Golden, right? That's why his yeah. response was like, oh. Yeah, Dave Madden. <laughs> Dave Madden's, uh, he's in California. Well, if so, you knew uh, that, why didn't you say something? I, well, I, it was like one of those things where I glanced over it. It might have been like while we were at the casino. So oh, I, oh, <laughs> oh, I, have to re I have to rethink this. <laughs> the writer and the fire. That's, that flows Well, when he right. told me that, I was like, you know, because, you know, fighter and the kid, that's the whole... Funny yeah, we were, yeah, yeah, we're so I was, like, and the I was like, oh man, that's like really similar. I was like, I want the writer and the boy, you know, because now you got the writer and the fighter, yeah. and the writer and the kid, and the fighter. Oh, Dennis, me. Leave it up to Jake Smith. Or Jake Smith, Smith, we're coming for you, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My fight camp starts right after this. Drink. <laughs> Speaking of him, though, uh, dude, because I was thinking, I was like, okay, so in your camp, you got Jake Smith. A.K.A. Smitty, A.K.A. the Half Black Attack, right? That's like kind of <laughs> A.K.A. A.K.A. AKA the Half White Delight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he has three nicknames then, technically, and then you got Sunshine, 
Dude, where's your nickname? <laughs> uh, well, guys, it's 2018. I think we're done with nicknames. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. no, I, I just don't think I'm cool enough to rock a nickname. I don't know. I've never, You're really not. I've never been, gi I've never been given one. So yeah, I, like, I can't, like, can't give myself one. And uh, So, yeah, I just don't have one yet. And uh, I don't know. It just better be cool when it's I find one. No one, no one in my team there, like, give me some bullshit nickname and I'm not cool. going to go. Yeah, you're just going to roll with it? No, no. no. I'm just going to disown it. Yeah. Honestly, I really, I yeah, think you just, just one. you aren't cool enough for one. Yeah. <laughs> 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 just, just hey, man. I'm just kidding. That'll come. It'll come. Uh, are we recorded on this audio? Or what's the, you uploaded via the cam. Yeah. How's that work? What do you mean? The audio. Yeah, it's all the same thing. So you Honestly, I've never done SoundCloud, so we'll see how that works. <laughs> gotcha. gotcha. Yeah. Well, man, coming off uh, your first UFC fight, to abolish me, <laughs> the controversy. <laughs> it's died down, right? The hate a little bit. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I think I think it's died down a little bit. Your Instagram uh, that uh, that oh my overnight. God, that so What'd you gain? Like thousands of followers. No, I I'm only gained like one thousand followers, I think. Just uh, like thirty thousand comments. Yeah, on just, your a dude, just a lot of hate comments. Uh, <laughs> I want to hear the funniest one you heard. The most like. Unique, original yeah. one you've heard or you've read. If you have read through them, no, I, I didn't really. I didn't really read through them. Uh, someone told me. I think uh, my girlfriend's mom told me that uh, someone commented, "Go back to Mexico." Yeah. Nice. That was, so I went Real back. Creative. I found the comment and I commented back, "Cabo or uh, Cancun." Yeah, because <laughs> I just got paid. I'm going to make paid. That was yep. <laughs> Good idea, good idea. Uh, yeah, well, like, actually, I actually will. I didn't, you know, I didn't get fight of the night. Yeah. <laughs> so, fight of the night, man. When do you find out, right? I know when they announce it. Do you find out at the same time, or do they tell you privately beforehand? So, you know, uh, we knew it was a great fight right afterwards, and uh, my manager was there. He was pushing. He was like, texting, hey, texting Sean. So, hey, that was a great fight of the night. <laughs> fight of the night, huh? <laughs> and uh, we, it was just maybe right Right as the fights ended, um, my manager gets a text, shows me the phone. Well, I'm, in a, nice. I'm in the app at the after party, and I'm just like, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Another round. Perfect way, perfect way to get this started. This oh, hell yeah, been a crazy man. journey, and it, this, you know, it's a perfect way to get started. Yeah. Yeah. Dave, that was a battle, man. man. That was a battle. Um, so definitely cool. worthy of fight of the night, in my opinion. So you found out right after the last fight. Yeah. Right? yeah. Well, I was scared. I was scared for you. I was because I watched the fights with him and uh, Dave. Yeah, at Dave Robinson's um, house. And I was scared that you were going to lose it. Daddy. Scared you were going to lose Fight of the Night because I was like, okay, everything, you know, that was still the best one. And we got to the main event. And when Kevin Lee got rocked, oh, and I was like, oh, like, fuck, dude. He might have lost it just because, you know, that no, made was, it a little competitive. You weren't worried. I was already <laughs> celebrating after the Frank Gator Cup fight because <laughs> Kevin missed weight. Oh, that's so right. I was not worried about that. Get rid of I, I didn't think really they were gonna give him like a fight of the night, maybe a performance or to yeah, one, yeah. one or the other. But I didn't think they were gonna give him fight of the night just because of that. So, uh, so I was like, uh, after the Frankie Cup fight, I was like, oh, here man, we I think, go. I, was like, I think I got it. I like, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think he got performance either, even though he should have. But yeah, the weight was an issue, you know. Um, no, but that was that was scary, man. Not gonna lie, um, your fights are are nerve wracking unless you fucking knock someone out in 59 seconds, this shit is, uh, this shit's nerve-wracking. I've never been, uh... <laughs> no, he was... Yeah, I've, I've never been, like, I don't know why I feel personally invested in, a, in, a, in fights, right? Other than yours. I mean, it brings me back to wrestling in high school, middle school, when I was a kid, like, that nervous feeling you get before. That crazy, that stomach. <laughs> Something about yours, dude, because I know you, because we sponsored you, you know, the whole deal, and because you're a friend. That shit's... Can I just all be like 59 seconds and overwhelmed? <laughs> Believe me, man. I, I, <laughs> like, I don't know how it would be to be your mom or your girlfriend oh or something, God. man. Well, my, my mom's <laughs> banned from the event. She's, I know, she don't! <laughs> she, 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 was, she gets a little too crazy. She can't. She couldn't even watch me wrestle back. She'd go to one match a year. Yeah. That was her limit. And uh, same thing with fighting. She's been, she's been to a few of them, but... She doesn't need to see that. I call her after every fight anyway. You let her know right away? Yeah, there's no point. She doesn't. She well, your eyes the entire fight anyway. She doesn't need to be there. Well, her husband watches and your siblings watch. Yep. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So they're yeah. sure they tell Or she can hear them yeah. yelling, yeah. right? From across the house. Yeah. 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 So I do got to ask, though, man, um, you know, with uh, your, your last fight, usually you're the dominant wrestler in, in all your fights I've seen, unless you can tell me about one, maybe when you're an amateur or something that you weren't with. You know, I've, I've watched you your whole career, and I haven't seen a fight where you didn't dominate wrestling, right? 
Um, and it looks like you were given, uh, man, you gotta help me pronounce his name. I fuck it up every time. <laughs> Marab. Guys call him Marab. Is that cool? I heard, I heard freaking. Guys call him Marab. Yeah, let's just. Okay. Marab. I don't want to be the fucking. I don't want to be <laughs> that the guy. Fuck, I don't want to be Joey Diaz in this For shit. Sure. Man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's always <laughs> <saying. Theopic. laughs> Well, yeah, you got the worst name to talk. Yeah, to so I'll just say Marab, right? Um, <laughs> you know, it, it looked like you were giving him your back. Right, quite a bit, um, just standing there. And I know we talked a little bit about it, but, um, you know, it, it sounds like there was something maybe going on with your back, um, either during the fight or pre-fight or something, because I've never seen you in a way that you were do the dominant wrestler in the fight. Was something going on with, with, with your back? I know you kind of hinted to it when we talked post-fight, um, you know, when we were celebrating, but, I mean... Yeah, let's, no. get, let's get some insider, insider information <laughs> on this first podcast, man. Yeah, I, I always, I always like, hey, like, everyone says it, like, oh, I don't want to make excuses, you know. That's like, was, and then followed by the excuse. Yeah, yeah. Well, here's what I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it for you. I'm gonna ask. <laughs> I'm gonna put it on you. You have to tell so, me you're not making excuses. I feel like, and you won the fight. Yeah. Right. I definitely wouldn't have like brought this up if I lost. I mean, I didn't want to. Well, you can't talk about it. You know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, so, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, no, I, I've had like ongoing back issues throughout like my fight career. And then um, I threw my back out, you know, a few weeks before, like, you know, I went from one training camp to the other. I was training for five, five minute rounds for the, when I was defending my LFA fight. Oh, okay. And then uh, I was still in the cage when they told me, hey, you're fighting. You got signed. You know, yeah, you're fighting. So in, awesome. You know, one month. <laughs> yeah, so awesome. And then again, you're like, oh, wait, I'm wait. beat up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm point. beat up. I'm, uh, right. And uh, I, I told the UFC, like, yeah, we have to go to the doctor on Monday. We'll make sure they're going to clear me. And the UFC's like, oh, okay. Uh, we can put you in the contender series this summer instead. Then. Oh, you're like. And I said, oh, hey, never mind. I'm good. You know, like yeah, yeah I miss this opportunity. Never mind. Yeah, no. So I was like, you know, ignore it. You know, was uh, just make it to the make it to the show. So, uh, but yeah, no, I had you know I had some back back troubles, and uh, you know we we knew that we we're gonna deal with that in the fight and during the fight, and uh, I just really couldn't fight any emotions going back, and it, and really the adrenaline was going, so it didn't hurt as much, but it just kind of like stuck me there. I like, couldn't breathe. Yeah, like hit me. Positions when he was going for those body locks and stuff where I couldn't, you know, so I, I had to give up positions, and we, but we kind of planned for it. That's why I was kind of hitting those grand beats and kind of staying calm and just getting the cage and stuff. So, so you came into the fight knowing this back is going to give me issues, give me problems, so you adjusted your game plan based on that? Is yeah. that why you, you did your grand rolls, right? Yeah. A couple, few times, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and then uh, you, you, a couple times you stood up, I believe, even leaned against the cage while he had your back, and it didn't look like you were in any trouble. But it also didn't look like you were, you know, um, I guess trying to better your position, right? It looked like you were kind of just chilling. Was that one of those things where you're like, I'm gonna let my back chill out. I'm not gonna defend this how I normally would because my back's gonna lock up. Or how bad was it, man? Yeah, no, it was. It was definitely at that point. But also, Marab is a savage. Like he has. Some great oh yeah. Sambo, you know, he he has great wrestling, but I just. I don't. I don't feel like I would really get put in those positions, and I, I think it, it. It would definitely be a different fight, you know, if I can go in that fight. Hundred percent. Even eighty percent. You know, like. Well, does anyone you know, ever go in hundred percent though? Yeah. yeah. Right. I, right. There's been a few fights that I, that I have, so it's it's rare. It's definitely yeah. rare. So. Was there um. Was there ever a time where you were really worried about it? Your back, like how? how I'm trying to get a gauge, man. We'll move we'll <laughs> on from this. Like, uh, I'm gonna dwell on your back, but <laughs> trying to get a gauge of like how serious, what, how, how hard did you have to push through it or adjust your camp or you know I know it's a long flight over there. Was there issues? I don't know if you had layovers or what. Yeah. Um, like like, you know, it's a little snapshot of, of compared to Drake said. You know, does anybody really go into a fight 100 percent? No, but at the same time, yeah, it, it, was, it seemed a little different. Yeah, it was it was a point where I had, I was like just trying to just trying to get there, you know. I knew I knew once the, once the fight started that you know the adrenaline would kick in, I'd be able to get it done. But it was bad. Like when I was taking photos and stuff, I couldn't like stand up straight. Like in between like you know the video photos, I'd like be rolling out, stretching, mm -hmm. trying to like mm -hmm. just because I'd be like hunched over, I couldn't walk. You know, like I'd, I I like, so you see you can see like my the photo like, when they show like the stats, like you see my body, it's like I look super <laughs> awkward. So I'm trying to like stand up straight and I, I just like really couldn't. So, so there's no fucking joke. No, it, it sucked. It, it wasn't it, a little it, injury going into a no. fight. But I've been doing, uh, I've been doing PT since the fight. Um, so, uh, I mean, I, I'm doing a lot better already. I'm, I haven't been doing any live yet. So I'm just kind of getting back into it and getting ready for what's next. So I just wanted the body to be, just heal up. We had yeah. a busy year. So, uh, Very. so uh, now that, now that we have time to heal up, and now I'm starting to feel good again, my weight's back down, and 
ready to beat someone up. Hey! Somebody. Yeah, uh, this, door's not, this door's not locked, is it? This is not locked the door. Can I send you a quick getaway? <laughs> no, we got uh, to beat somebody up. Huh? Oh, I mean, Drake? Drake's the writer here. Do you have any inside information on what's in the works with little Ricky here before he might be able to drop, drop some on us? I've heard some things, and I mean, he's got called out a little bit today after a call out of his own, you know? <laughs> so just for people listening or watching, I don't have a Twitter, right? So I'm... Yet. Yeah, yeah, yet. <laughs> yet. You're on our social media. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, when it comes to this shit, people calling people out and whatnot, I'm usually the last to hear. I know, I send it all the damn <laughs> yeah. um, So, what the fuck happened today, guys? <laughs> well, little B's acting like he's calling me out all of a sudden. Like, yeah, all yeah. of a sudden, this fight was his idea. I'll let him think that. I'm over here. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, Benito. Yeah, I'll, let me sign my... When the contract gets here, I'll sign it. But There's I, no contract? I have not received a contract. Benito is acting like he received a contract, but... Uh, but um, yeah, they. Uh, you guys are hearing what I'm hearing. You mm -hmm. know, uh, the UFC mm -hmm. wants us to uh, fight on the UFC 227 August 4th in LA mm -hmm. at the Stable Center. That'd be that'd be crazy. Uh, Benito's from California. Um, I love beating guys up from California. I've <laughs> <laughs> seen that a few times. I've done it a few times. So uh, he's next. You know, uh, he we were supposed to fight a few times already, and uh, some way, somehow, one way or another, he found a way to weasel out of the fight. Um, so. It's time now. We both made it to the big show. Yeah. There's nowhere else to run. We're, uh, he was maybe it was like a he was being strategic. Maybe he was being smart, not fighting me. Then he was undefeated. All right, cool. Like, but now we're here. Let's get paid. <laughs> Let's fight. It's gonna be fighting that. He's he's an excited fighter. Yeah. He he throw, he has nice knees. He has nice kicks. He has nice elbows. And he's tall for the weight class. So uh, we're gonna we're having an exciting fight. And that's that's what I want. Mm -hmm. That's what I want. You know. Well, okay, he's like <clears throat> probably five nine ish. He's I say yeah, five ten yeah. maybe. Yeah, he's he's pretty tall for Bantamweight, yeah. especially. Yeah. Um, about as skinny as that that uh, Lampert. <laughs> <laughs> no, stylistically, you match up uh, really good with them. Oh yeah, which I mean, is maybe why he's avoided yeah. you a little bit. Oh oh yeah, uh, I, I'm not saying that. Just no, he <laughs> he's avoided me. I'm saying that. Yeah. His coaches don't want the fight. You're right, favor. He's been to the gym because of Paige Van Zandt. Bobby Arnold's brought up the fight. And your eye favorite will straight up say, it's not the fight we want. That was after Benito won in the UFC. Wow. Too bad. Like, I I, I, I don't know. Like, I can't cherry pick, man. Yeah, like, we're, fight the best we're trying to make some names. He was on the contender series. He won a split decision. I was on the contender series. I won a split decision. He got shouldn't signed. Have been, shouldn't have been. <laughs> yeah. First of all, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's he's now, now we're going off on that. Don't, right? get, me, I know. don't get me started. <laughs> all right, all right. I want to hear this so, point you were about to yeah. make. We both won the split decisions. <laughs> I didn't have... A UFC fighter in my corner, like he had Cody Garbrandt, so he got signed after a very unimpressive win over Stephen uh, Peterson. Peterson. Yeah, Peterson. 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 Uh, he also made it too. Yeah. All right. So. Sorry. Sorry. Just no, <laughs> yeah. There's, there's more of that too. There's more of that too. So. So yeah. So I'm, it's just there's a it's just a lot. It's just a lot of salt. I'm very <laughs> salty. All right. He he got he dodged me and he got opportunities that I did not. I freaking I had a fight. My ass off to get to this point. I, nothing was given to me. I'm, I was 12 and one, two-time world champion, going in to get a short notice fight into the UFC. You know? So, so yeah, this, I'm salty. I'm ready to take him down and elbow the shit out of his face. <laughs> <laughs> we hear, heard it here first. Yeah, everybody. Yeah, Ricky Simone's yeah. planning on killing Little B. <laughs> <laughs> planning on Not killing. the rapper. <laughs> Lil Benito. Lil Benito. Lil Benito Lopez. I so I, you know, I heard I've heard about this. Little, I guess, rivalry is what it's kind of become at this point. You guys got a lot of support. Um, not just you guys you have a lot of support. He has a little, a little support. Um, little, little support. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the fight has a lot of support, it seems like, you know. Uh, I, I saw the Twitter, right, but Drake sent it to me, and I looked at all the replies and all the repeat, retweets, and uh, it seems like the fight has a lot of support. And I've only seen, been familiar with this situation, for the last month or so, right? And what you guys got brewing. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, how, did all this, how did all this start, man? Coming from someone who doesn't know, um, you know, you, you know, explain it to someone who doesn't know, like, how long you've been in the scene, I know that, but I don't know how long he's been in the scene, uh, when you guys crossed paths, and how long it's been in the making, because I can tell just sitting in here, I mean, you're, you're, <laughs> just thinking about you're grabbing your hands like you're ready to fight right now. Like this, I can tell it matters to you. Like, how long has this been stewing, man? Well, we were supposed to fight, I believe, 
We've been uh, a year and a half ago uh, for the first time. Um, LFA? No, it was going to be King of the Cage. Okay. Um, I was going to go to his hometown. I was, it was going to be in his hometown. And uh, he pulled out because he got sick or something. You know, that was, he, and that was like three weeks before the fight he pulled out. It's like, three, you don't yeah. pull out three weeks before the fight because you got sick. No, I mean, you get better that was the first that. one. That was the first one. serious sick. Yeah, <laughs> so that was the first time I was like, and I, that, that already told me, it's like, you don't want to fight. Like, I, I've gone into fights way worse than this, even this last one, by with a bag, you know, so, uh, I, I, and that's just how I am, like, I grew up as a wrestler, you know, you show up and, and, and you get the job done, so, uh, and then, um, there was another time where we were supposed to fight for a title on a, on a, in a different promotion, uh, but that one wasn't his fault, I will admit that, the entire promotion, I think, uh, uh, like a week up or two weeks before, mm -hmm. got 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 scrapped. So oh, shit. entire promotion. Huh? Yeah, they, they 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 cut the entire. Wait, like, card. oh, just the card or like the company's gone. Uh, I, I don't even know what the company was. So we, uh, yeah, so, <laughs> Maybe it's uh, all right. All right. All right. Yeah, so, uh, so we won't put that one on, on Lil Benito. But, <laughs> yeah. yeah so, he, he, unless man, he plotted uh, that. He probably did. He got the whole did. It was it was his organization. So he was in Cali. I think it was because they weren't selling enough tickets. So I oh. he probably was like not selling tickets on purpose. So Lil Benito. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> oh man, he's buying all those tickets and refunding them. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, okay. And then so uh, he bounced on one, and one, then, one, <clears throat> the company, Little and Benito's then company pulled out. In King of the Cage, um, mm -hmm. I took it on like uh, two or three weeks' notice, okay. and then uh, he pulled out of that one. And then uh, another one, they offered him the fight, and then he ended up accepting it against my buddy instead. And I decided to corner my buddy just to go and like stand and yeah. look at Benito across the cage. I'm like, bro, I'm I'm tracking you down, bro. I'm here. <laughs> so, uh, so well, that is, and, and honestly, there's like there's no real beef between us. Like, yeah. I, I saw him at the UFC performance too, and I saw him say, hey, "What's up, Benito?" Like, at the in the end of the day, like, I'm I'm doing a sport that I love to do, and there's camaraderie. Like, there's different teams, and I, I'm not like, I don't I don't just my team, and I don't just hate everybody else. Yeah. Like, at the end of the day, as a sport. Like, I see some guys. I'm like, oh, that guy's dope too. Yeah, it's like, brotherhood, right? You know? Yeah. So, uh, but uh, but I still want to beat him up, and I still want to get paid to do it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so well, I'm so hyped now. Uh, <laughs> uh, I know. It's gonna be August already. <laughs> actually, uh, I actually called him out after a King of the Cage fight, and uh, I was just at King of the Cage last night, and mm -hmm. I talked to the to one of the owners, and I told him to send me the clip, so he's gonna send. Send nice. me the whole clip of it, so I'm gonna try, to, go. try to get that for us. Look out, we'll, we'll look out for it. Blast it out. Why him, man? Why Lil B? He was the first guy. Was was it the the first guy to ever uh, hide from you? To ever to ever pull out well, and, and, and you come you took, up at the same you, time? You took it it's just, it's just, it's just no, 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 no. It's just, just the timing. No, 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 no. It just, it just, we're, you know. It makes sense. It just makes sense. We're both coming off the contender series. He has a win in the UFC. I have a win in the UFC. We're both at that kind of the same level. We're exciting fighters. Why not? You know. And and what am I gonna say when they ask me who I want to fight next? Uh, no one? No, I'm going to say I want to fight, and they're going to give me that fight. Thank what you, happened? <laughs> no. I said I wanted to fight Lil B. Who am I going to fight next? Lil I'm going to fight Lil B. So, so Lil B, stop acting like you're calling me out <laughs> with these tweets. Tell yeah, me to sign a contract. Believe me, when I get a contract sent to me, it's going to be signed within a minute. Oh, <laughs> you heard it. <laughs> Dude, uh, yeah, that shit's time stamped. You can see who called out who first. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I was dying. Today when I saw that he blocked Smitty on Twitter, I was he blocked like, Jake Smith, yeah, and he was like, he was like, come Why? on, I don't know, hey, Smitty. I like, I, I, I haven't met Jake Smith. I don't I like, like I love I don't, Jake. I don't play Little B. I, I'm, I'm one tweet away from blocking Smitty too. <laughs> <laughs> if I had a fucking Twitter, I would really quote that, and that I would tweet that right now. Yeah, he talks shit to you too on there. Is, he, is anyone he doesn't talk shit? <laughs> I know. That guy seems entertaining, yeah. man. That guy seems yeah. We'll get him on. How long you been here? How long have no? Jake, Jake, Jake Smith, man. I do. That'll be your second guest. Oh, yeah, you yeah. guys want him? Believe me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've known him. I was uh, his team captain on his, on the wrestling team. Just oh like, shit! Bring that up. He doesn't like to union. Uh, yeah. yeah so, <laughs> he went to union. Uh, yeah. Well, he went to union for one year. I, uh, we were on the same wrestling team, and um, yeah, that's where we met. Um, we actually weren't friends then, though. Like, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know what it was. We just, I was kind of a recluse in high school, and then, you know, he was kind of a, kind of wild. So like, I was team captain. I was team captain. I was team captain. He was over here causing all this commotion. I'm like, hey, hey guys, stop it, please. <laughs> and then Jake was just like, fuck you. And I'm like, all right, all right. yeah, yeah. Because I was a, yeah. So anyway, I was younger than him. So, all right. so, uh, and then uh, after high school, I was like, 
he's actually the one who got me into fighting. Uh -huh. uh, I saw he was fighting, and I mentioned, I was like, oh, man, you fighting? He's like, you should try it, man. You'd be good. Come train with me. And so I started training with him in the mall, and it was just me and him oh, training wow. together. It was like I, I was working a crazy schedule. He was working a crazy schedule. We'd meet up in the mornings. We'd do some random MMA training. You know, he taught me how to punch a bag, oh, you know, wow. and, uh, and then I would go work out later in the evening and then go to work. And then uh, it'd be like every day, it's just grinding. And then now he signed to Bellator. He's ranked in Bellator, just knocks some fool out. Dude, that was, yeah. that was good, yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. So we owe it to Smitty for your career? Is yeah. what you're saying? Oh, whoa. Oh, whoa. You put that out there. I don't even know the guy, but I know you put that out there. He's going to run with it. Yeah. Yeah. That one part going to run with it. I'm going to remember that yeah. when I have CTE in 20 years. <laughs> yeah, man. Send him the, yeah. Send him the bill. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, how do you, how is it watching your friends fight, man? Like, is it is it how like, you're in the game, man? So you know, a fight could be won in any second, right? Or a fight can be lost at any any second, right? Um, and I just like I spoke on, I, I know how I feel watching you fight. I get nervous. Like I'm personally invested. Is it the same when you're watching your boys fight? It's the exact same. I hate it. I uh, for any of my teammates, even last night, like. I'm sitting, my girlfriend, you, she sees me, she's like, you're so stoic when you're in a fight. You're like, I'm like, that's how I like to be. When I'm in a fight, control. I'm like, I'm not nervous. Like, I'm, I, I accept that I, I did everything. I know I did everything to prepare myself. It's time to just, just go have fun. But when my buddy's fight, I'm just like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't know, just like, move my head. Like, she can help. <laughs> just just like, help. Just, just, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so, like, uh, any of my teammates, but especially uh, Tyson Nam or um, mm -hmm. Jake, if they fight, I'm, that's, mm -hmm. it gets so bad. I'm just like, I'm just sweating. I'm just sweating. <laughs> Tyson over in Hawaii? Yeah, yeah Tyson. Yeah, 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 that's your buddy. Yeah, yeah. That's where you go train, right? I just yeah. wanted to ask you about that. So, yeah, you <clears throat> normally you live here. You know, you train with Crazy Baja. Mm -hmm. um, and then you do all your camps over in Hawaii, mostly? Or, like, so, how's that work? So, I met Tyson when I was an amateur. I was like, about to go pro. I moved over to Portland because then it was Sports Lab, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, it was like, it was a pretty legit, we had a pretty legit crew and it was, it was unorthodox training, but it, it was pretty cool. We had a guy named Phil running this program and it, it was, it was a really cool concept, but like if you don't, you know, it's hard to pay, pay the bills in Portland if you don't have like general members yeah. and stuff like that, you know, so, but, uh, that's when I first met Tyson at, over that sports lab and, uh, you know, from an amateur, I started training with him and we, we just worked, you know, mm -hmm. his style, my style, we just, I had, we had a lot to offer each other. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, so he uh, he moved back to, ended up moving back to Hawaii about two years ago, and we were main training partners. So kind of like you know threw a wrench into like our training, you know. Yeah, so yeah. But we would train with each other every day. I'd like he had like uh, set up it even in his garage, and we'd even hit pads mm -hmm. in there if we didn't want to go to the gym, you know. So uh, once he moved back, I was like, we got to make this work. And so I would, I just started flying out there for his training camps, and then once I once I got the feel for it, I was like, maybe I can start doing my so half of my training camps mm -hmm. out here. And then first training camp I did it for was uh, that Chico Camus fight. Oh, I did. Wow. I did. Uh, Pretty recent then, yeah. Yeah, I, I uh, did two weeks home, three weeks there, three weeks home. You wow. know, so so I, I started splitting. Eight them, week camp. You know? Yeah, that's what I, I mean. For five five round fights, you kind of have to, you know. Uh, but uh, so that was the Chico Camus fight. Was the first fight I did for it. I, you know. I felt I felt fucking good. You I, did I pretty good up, too. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm a veteran, so I was like, yeah, this is a great recipe. I'm gonna keep doing it. So I did it for the Zani fight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man, <laughs> man that, that that body shot, man. There's a guy named Martin Day over there in Hawaii. I don't know if you know who that is. He's gonna, I think he has, he's gonna be fighting the contender series here coming up. Okay. That guy, man. He, I don't know how he makes 25. First of all, oh, yeah. but uh, he, he's a, he's a savage, dude. He throws some crazy combos. He's good everywhere. But you, you're gonna see. I, he highlights, he highlight real knocks me out basically in every practice. Like, really? so fly knee me, a wheel kick me. Look out for Martin. Yeah, <laughs> look out for Martin. Man. That guy is crazy. So, so we got there's just so many guys my in my weight class over there. So after that contender series fight, I kind of, you know, uh, I kind of felt like I needed those smaller, quick guys. Like uh, Donovan Freelo was a little, little bit too quick for me, and I wasn't used to that speed. Handled him still. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I figured him out, but still, like, I, it hit me right away. I was like, man, this is a different speed. There's a lot of the guys that, a lot of guys I train with at Gracie, you know. I get great training there, but a lot of those guys are. I'm training 145ers. I'm I'm yeah. like really the smallest guy, you know. Mm -hmm. So besides maybe one or two guys, yeah. so uh, I, I I feel like I needed to add that you know that extra training in. And Hawaii Elite MMA has been been perfect mm -hmm. for that. So it's gonna, I'm gonna keep doing it. <laughs> yeah, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, it's gotta be nice being in 
just away from home for at least a party. Yeah, I got a mini vacation. Uh, yeah, well, it's <laughs> like you get away and, and you get to go focus, right? You're not getting pulled in a million directions. Yeah. Right? And I've seen your, your social media when you're not training, you're chilling on the beach, <laughs> you're relaxed, you're eating good. Um, and it seems like you're just laser focused on your on your task at hand, man. That's got to be beneficial. Yeah, that, that is that is the best part about going there is that I just get to focus on training. And now that I'm like a part of like the, the, you know, the, I, I just feel like I'm part of them, you know, like I feel like I'm starting to become a local just because I start, I'm starting to have like some Hawaii sponsors. I got like, a new sponsor. I got like clothing sponsors. You start speaking pigeon soon, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> you come back, you're going to have an accent. <laughs> Right so, <laughs> yeah, dude, I know I love those guys and yeah, I know oh, we, we beat each other up in the morning, we chill on the beach right after, and then we beat each other up in the evening. So it's, <laughs> it's like the perfect oh, lifestyle. Fire, bro. Yeah, oh, seriously. It's not bad. But yeah. I get homesick after my problem is I get homesick after like a week. Yeah, really? I, you know, I have a I have a little brother uh, that I basically raised, he's ten. So after about a week he's like you know, he's texting me, he's like, Hey, when do you be home? I'm like, oh shit, I need, I need to go home, I need to go home and see my brother. Yeah. So so I yeah, but I mean it's worth it. You know, so I'm in Hawaii training. You know, doing what I love and, and yeah. you know, come back and be someone up and get paid. So, yeah, cool. there you go. You, uh, you, you have a girlfriend, a long time girlfriend? Yeah. It's been yeah. A, how long have you guys been together? Uh, actually, we, we've been together for almost eight years oh, now. Oh, shit. Yeah. Man, I didn't know that. I've <laughs> known you for a year, right? Right? I mean, no offense to her, but uh, you're. I, I just know you're so focused on fighting. Right? Um, She's like, that, the ring in. Yeah, <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm, saying takes, I'm not saying she takes a backseat to fighting, but your focus sometimes has got to be on the task at hand, right? Um, and that's what you're known for, right? So is it is it ever tough on you guys, or is it... Um, She's got to be understanding. She's been with you through this whole yeah, journey. Yeah, that's so cool. Cool. Yeah, that, that's that's really cool. Well, um, go ahead. She was a she was the stat girl on my wrestling team. Oh hell yeah! Oh, yeah. High school. <laughs> so she, Damn. She uh, oh, we, so she uh, she uh, she's been there since the beginning. I we started dating before I started right, right before I started fighting. What's her name by the way? Just so we. Her name is. Jade. Jade. We won't say her last name because all you creeps out there are going to look her up. She's like, I know Ricky Simone's a stud. His girlfriend's got to be banging. We're going to go follow her on Instagram. Her name's Jade. We'll leave it at that. They'll find her. You anyway. fucking creeps. Ah, no. shit. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. I know. I, she's going to get smart and leave me soon. So. Yeah. No, no she, but for real, man. So she's been, she's been there for the whole thing. thing. She was there, and I was like, hey, I think I want to try to like, fight. Like, you know, she's like, she, well, you were good at wrestling, so like, you know, you could try it. Like, I told her it was just a hobby. You well, what were you doing at the time? What were, what were you doing for work, man? I was uh, working at security full time and I was going to school. Oh, shit. At WSU? <laughs> Vancouver or Clark? Clark. Okay, okay. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, I was like, I decided not to wrestle in college. I was like getting fat and I was like, man, I need to compete in something. I was, first time in my life, but really, I wasn't mm -hmm. competing. You know, That's so. That's itch. Yeah, so it was really weird for me. And, uh, you know, she, she was like supporting me since, you know, since the beginning. and. I, I thought it was gonna be a hobby, and then all of a sudden I'm like five and zero. I'm fighting for a title as an amateur. That's how it happens. I'm training three times a day, and I'm just like always tired. I'm like, oh, this isn't a hobby anymore, man. <laughs> you know, so no, but she's been she's been great since the beginning. You know, she she's put up a lot. You know, like back when I used to cut to fifty five. And then all of a sudden I'm cutting to 45. 45 was a tough cut. And, I'm like, and all of a sudden I'm like, I think I'm gonna be 35. <laughs> she was, she was like, first time she saw me make 130. She like I you know I didn't see her for like two days or something. You know my cut days, and then she sees me right before weigh, and she sees me, she starts crying. She's like, "Cause you look like a skeleton." She's like, "I don't like this." And I was like, "Yeah, I need to get this down." So you know, and she, she, she's a very smart girl. She got, uh, she tried to become a physician's assistant, so oh, she wow. already got a four-year degree. She's trying to get into graduate school right now, so mm -hmm. she basically writes out my meal plans. She, you know, and she cooks them. So, <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> man. Well, so after every fight, she gets something nice. <laughs> so she gets taken care of for putting them with something. She was texting Dana, fight of the night, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? She's looking at Kay Jewelers online on one phone, <laughs> texting Dana on the other. <laughs> fight of the night, Dana. Separate tabs. Oh, man, but I've noticed that, uh, you know, I've seen her at, at your post fight celebrations and all that and I know you guys have been together for a while but I haven't asked you before and that's badass man yes. um, she's, she's seen the whole journey she's been I mean it's not even just your journey right it is in the, in regard to you know your journey in the MMA and UFC but you gotta feel like you guys have been in this together and that's that's powerful. She's a stag girl, bro. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, <laughs> no, that's real cool. Shout out to her because I know that shit can't be easy. Uh, I mean, you I know, know how she does it. <laughs> just like you said, it's real tough watching your buddies fight because with yours, you're in control, right? Yeah, same thing. Same thing with a wrestling match. You're 
you know, because that's all I can relate it to, right? It's a one-on-one -on -one competition. Played baseball and football and all that growing up, but wrestling, it's it's one on one, right? Yeah. And it's when I'm when I'm wrestling, you get nervous before, but it's I'm in control. Whatever happens out there so is because you. of me, right? And I can I can control it, right? But when you're watching somebody else, especially somebody close to you, you're not in control. You can't do anything, right? So it's nerve wracking. So I can only imagine what that's like for her. Not only, you know, it's not just watching because I get how it is watching a buddy fight that I'm close with. But now watching a loved one fight that you are cooking their food, right? <laughs> you're living with them, right? You're, it's, you're, you have a life together, right? And now you're not in control of that, those 15 minutes, right? The, one, the only 15 minutes that you don't have a, oh, a part of, that's got to be fucking... So shout out, shout out to Jade, man. If you're listening, if you end up listening to this shit, like, you're a, you're a fucking stud. <laughs> you're, you're, you're more of a stud than Ricky is. Nah, I don't <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah. No, but for real, that's, that's cool that you got that. Yeah, um, yeah. That's, a, that's a really cool support system, man. That's man really I can't cool even imagine how she was feeling for the last fight, bro. Oh, you're hanging oh, on with the guillotine. Oh. <laughs> oh, how'd, that, how'd that feel, by the way, man? Your arm must have got fucking yeah. tough. Especially at the end of the You fight. must have had a pump, bro, when you... <laughs> uh, no, that's, like, that's what one of my... My uh, it, most successful uh, submissions, honestly. So, so well, yeah, I, I also have one arm, which a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So I don't fight, but <laughs> but but that's like a we call that a Saturday Night Ride in wrestling. So I'm used to that position. Uh, I'm Rob probably is too. I don't know, but but sorry, bro. <laughs> but uh, no, my, I mean I just knew like. You know, I've had that choke so many times. I knew to adjust, to keep the squeeze, keep breathing, and just figure out what I could do and you know, not keep giving it up. And I just kept a constant squeeze, and I could feel him going in and out. You know, I wasn't. I I was confused during the the whole leg the leg kicking. I thought I thought it was a Tim Elliott Joey B situation That's where, exactly where he was tapping with his feet. I, I thought he was. It was happening. Yeah, yeah, every, I think uh, when I yell at the ref, uh, you did. Yeah, you should. Yeah. Everyone was like, "Oh, you're asking if the he was out." I'm like, "No, not that's the first time." I was asking if he was tapping with his feet. I'm like, "Is that not a tap?" Yeah. You know, so because no. no, I couldn't tell. Because honestly, I'm the choking, so I couldn't tell if he was, you know, tapping or not. And then when I got off of him and saw his eyes roll back, I was like, "Oh, his head shit. was purple, was like, bro. The, that bald head was the, purple." The, the difference with that though is Elliot had his, both his arms. They were stuck. trapped. Yeah, he did not. So it's like, but they were, is he trying to stay well, alive? Yeah, that didn't mean anything, or is it? Right. it's just reactionary I of yeah. I think, it was, I think it was the body's natural no. response to being out and being still fighting fight or that's, flight mode. That's what you know. Because um, when he came to man, he wasn't there, right? It, you know, when people wake up after they've been knocked out or they've been uh, put to sleep, they they want to fight the ref sometimes because <laughs> they snap back and they still think they're in their fight. I saw a little bit out of him, man. Um, that a little bit of that out of him. So I mean, that guy was definitely out. I, I, did you ask the ref if he was out, or did you tell the ref he was out? Because it looked at me the end there? like you were saying yeah. he's out. He's no, out. When I'm choking him, I was asking. I think I was asking. I was like, oh, okay. That's the feet. But after the fight, I think I told him like, all right. <laughs> I said, look at this. You pointed at him. His eyes were like this. His eyes were like, and you can see. Oh, you stood up. His and feet like kicked afterwards. Happen. I'm like, there's no question about this. <laughs> and then I see him wave the fight off. So I'm like, I, I'm like, all right, I won. Hell yeah, like, that was crazy. And, going, and then all of a sudden I see Marab finally get up and start running around a circle. And <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, bro, what are you celebrating? You for? almost died. <laughs> Yeah. So, no, you uh, yeah, no, you straight up pointed over his limp body. And uh, I can't. He's out. <laughs> you pointed. The most insane. It's one of the most insane debuts of all time. UFC debuts. Was oh, bro. No, I, uh, yeah, that was so loud, man. It was. Well, how many oh, UFC oh, debuts? You know, like uh, set a record and win fight of the night. But that's, that's, that's a good way to. That's a good way to start. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, bro, that's what a good debut. Well, <laughs> how often does a prelim fighter? Have his name spoken that much no, after no, his first fight? Not unless they're like super high. And win or, fight of the night. Yeah, yeah, no, that was like. Bro, you weren't even on TV at first before a few fights dropped out. Uh, yeah. You were on Fight Pass. Oh, yeah, he was yeah. supposed to be on Fight Pass. That's and now, saying. after that. You got lucky. Yeah. <laughs> and then, it was, just, it was just a per. It was just the perfect That is store. so true. Uh, so, a lot less people, people would have saw that. that. People pulled that. And, the, one of the dudes who pulled out had like the same back issue I had. Like he You're couldn't like, like move. And, stuff. and I was like, oh shit, that guy's pulling out. I was thinking, I was like, man, was kind of scared. I was like, oh, my guy's pretty messed up too, bro. <laughs> Pussy. No. <laughs> but I wasn't. I, the way I found out too was like, 
we were getting lined up to be on like the Fox, you know, weigh-ins. Like, yeah, the, that's why. Oh, that, so that's yeah. when you found out the weigh-ins. I didn't know. Yeah, like, I was like, all right, some stuff got jumbled here. I'm like, yeah. I wonder if they're gonna bump me up. <laughs> but uh, where they're putting us in line, and I'm like, all right, they haven't said anything to me, whatever, you know. So uh, and then also I'm like far back in the line, and I'm looking at everybody, and I'm like, oh, I'm pretty far. I'm yeah. like, hey, is there a mistake here? I think I'm second fight. Uh -huh. Like, oh no, you're co-main on the prelims now. I'm like, what? I was leaving my coach Bobby Otto. I was like, hell yeah, <laughs> <laughs> hell yeah. Oh man, yeah. that's right because. You lost some fights because of Leslie Smith's situation, which is a totally different topic. <laughs> um, yeah. And she was supposed to be the headliner on the prelims. So you lost that one, and then I think another one. So it was just like, put him there. And it worked out pretty yeah. good. That was a good amount of fights, too. There's a lot of finishes yeah, yeah, there, huh? For real. It's a good amount of fights. How was it? Um, I want to talk about a few things that aren't fight related before you, know, like you gotta go. Yeah, there's no structure. But, there's no um, structure. You're just going. <laughs> going. Uh, I, I'm really curious, man, how you felt during that fight. Um, you, uh, how did how did, you, did you feel in control? Like I said, it was the first fight I watched yours, you know, and again, due to your back issue, that you weren't. You were, I mean, fuck, I've seen positions, I've seen, you were in positions where I was like, ah, oh, he's going to lateral drop him, right? Because you fucking lateral drop the fuck out of people. And then, you know, it didn't happen, right? Come to find out, you know, what was well, going on. What I was saying um, also was that he still hit his takedowns. Good. No, no, for, for sure. Right? My, my question is, how did you, did you feel in control? How did you feel going into that third round or the last half of the third round? Did you feel like I got to do something here? Um, you, did you feel like you had the scorecards? Yeah, how, it, how did you feel, man? Um, I didn't feel desperate, but I felt frustrated. Yeah. I think if I, if I was going to say one word, like, yeah. frustrated. Like, I was just frustrated myself. Like, you can just see me, I'm just, like, looking at myself, like, in between, I'm like, man, I'm throwing these because I'm tight. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not, like, I'm not flowing through anything. Everything is, like, herky-jerky, like, you know, so, uh, but, uh, so, yeah, I was, just, I was, if I was, I felt frustrated, honestly, and I, and, uh, I knew I needed to do something, but, um, you know, I also, you know, going back and looking at it, I, I hate watching my fights. I, I hate watching them after. I didn't watch my fight for about a week and a half or something, but my, uh, my boxing coach, Andy, made me come over and watch it with him. And, you know, it was a lot better than I thought, you know. You know, I was landing, I was landing uh, some good shots and countering and kind of doing the, for, for the game plan for what we had and what we were working with. You know, I did, I consi all considered, I did, I did all right. So, um, but yeah, overall, I was just frustrated, frustrated and, you know, Marab's speed and strength, but also frustrated in like what I was doing and, and how I was performing. So, yeah, did, when, you, did you uh, just, just throw a quick follow up there? Before you went into that guillotine attempt, right? That ended up being a very successful attempt. Were you? Did you feel like I got to do this to win this fight? Where Where's your head at in those last few minutes? Because I think you had him for. We didn't I didn't mention when he knocked himself out on that takedown. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you went down, you went down into the guillotine. I think what a minute twenty left, and by the time you had right it, about a minute. By the time you had it, I think by the time you had it sunk, it, it, it was in a guillotine for a full minute. Yeah, by the time it's by the time you settled, I think it was just straight for a minute of squeezing. So those couple minutes leading up to that, though, were you? Did you feel like I got to do something here to win? And he gave it. Do I got to? Do I have to finish him to win? Did you think yeah. that, or did you think? Uh, if I can, if I can win this round, uh, I'll be all right. Um, no, I thought, I thought the second round was a lot closer. I had figured I lost the first because I, I had you in the be, second because I because I got dropped in the first. But uh, in the second, uh, I felt a lot better. I thought I won one re or one judge to get me. Yeah, I gave me that round, but two two gets me off. So yeah. technically, I, I lost the second, and then the third. Uh, I think all the judges would give me. Gave me the round when they scored at the end. I saw that because mm -hmm. Bruce, Bruce asked for the scorecards. Yeah, so they actually, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Uh, wrote it yeah they did but, fill it out. Well, but yeah, uh, if you don't win the third, then yeah. those judges just go. <laughs> just yeah, go. yeah. So, <laughs> so how uh, did you feel? Yeah. No, I, I definitely feel like I need to do something. And Finish plus, I've never, yeah, I've never been in a situation where like I'm coming back. Like I've been in close fights, and then I, you know, I, I, I you know, I finished strong, but. You know, it's never really like me coming back like that, you know, so. Where if you didn't win that second so, round, but, you lost. But at the same time, if I if someone lands a jab on me or gets a quick takedown on me, I'm like, oh, crap, I'm losing. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's you know, how it is. So, is that really so, how it is? <laughs> honestly, yeah. One time in my fifth, or my fourth or fourth, fifth pro fight, I beat the crap out of a guy. And, like, the guy took me down for, like, one second. I oh, asked my corner, like, did I lose? <laughs> and they're like, no. No, you did not lose. Oh, I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> so you didn't feel desperate. You didn't feel, I got I to gotta finish this or I lose. But you, you just figured, I, I yeah. had to finish strong. I, I knew I had to do something. I, I, I knew the second round was close, but uh, and I felt like I was winning the third. But, uh, you know, 
I, I knew I, I yeah, figured I had to get a finish. Yeah. I figured yeah. I had to get a finish. Well, shit, man. Congratulations for that. And, you know, on that. I know it's you know it's been what a month now. Yeah, since that fight. Over, man. Yeah. Um, we were talking about it maybe like last month or something, but. We were talking about how active he's been his whole career. Fuck. I literally <laughs> looked it up <laughs> so, on MMA. What is it? MMA? Tapology, maybe. Yeah, I was looking up. Yeah, it was on Tapology. Shout out to your pro career. <laughs> how, how often you what we well, fought. So, I mean, you might remember when I was your career. But it was like five the first year, and then like maybe not four the second year. No, it was, it was four. It was, it was like at four. least three it was four. on average anyways. So, yeah, it was like... Damn, man, like, are you going to try and... It's harder to keep the pace in UFC, obviously, with all the fighters and everything, but you, like, finally have a break now, right yes. now. <laughs> I, yeah, my body was worn, too. I, I needed it, but... Yeah. Just, just, <laughs> so everybody knows listening, this motherfucker came straight from the gym to... <laughs> yeah, to here. Right? Oh, uh, huh. well, if you say he's got a break, he's got a break from, from uh, fighting, you know, real... <laughs> Fight, right? <laughs> From beginning of training camp. Yeah, fight. yeah, it's a running a camp. But this motherfucker literally was on his Instagram <laughs> at what, three, what do you want, 3.18 miles today? Yeah, somewhere like Yeah, that. posting it. I had to text him, hey, are, this was at 2.30 two and we're supposed to be on at 3? I'm like, did you, uh... I know, I planned it out bad. Are we gonna finish my run and get here? Are we still, I was early too. I, yeah, I, I, I was like, are we still on? Yeah, so when he says this guy's taking a break, he's not taking a break. It's a break for him, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you're, he's not sitting around getting fat, right? For all you're just listening and not seeing. No, you, you know, this looks like one well, let's know, see. strong motherfucker. So let's assume we get Benito <laughs> well, on, in little, August. Little Benito? Little Benito. Okay, Little Benito. Benito. Uh, so that would be August. You fought last month, April. April to August. That's normal. That's like, yeah, an average. That's yeah. not normal. But he's been doing shorter than that. It's not normal. Yeah, it's weird. It's I feel like I'm on vacation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. I'm starting to get to the point where I'm like, man, I need to fight. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta call somebody else out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, anyway, who's gonna get injured next? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so actually, how, how, how was your mindset there? Um, you know, obviously you're walking around a little heavy, right? Um, you're not compared to where you've been the last few years, just because you're not like you're not you're not in a camp, right? Um, is it you know, say you get this contract or where's your where's your mind at, man? If they call you in a month or two and say, Hey, someone pulled out, we had a fight in four weeks, are you no? Because I've never known you to say no to a fight, man. It's hard to I have never said I've never where's said your no mind? Where's your yeah, I'm not saying, you know, exactly situation, but just holistically, where's your mind? I've never known Ricky Simone to say no to a fucking <laughs> fight. <laughs> Man, I've been, I, I was basically in training camp for, uh, I, they were like in that, hey, you got to stay ready, you know, yeah. that's what the UFC kept telling me for two, almost two years, you know, so my weight, I kept having to keep, try to keep my weight low, I, you know, I was going through this and that, so it, it's definitely been a grind, so to be able to breathe now is nice, but, um, you know, I, I, I always try to stay at, like, my out of shape is, I feel like, is in most people's, like, in shape. Like, that's what I'm they, saying. Like, you just ran at the gym before coming here. Like, <laughs> I, I, I try to keep, I have to, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a very firm believer in keeping a strong base outside the training camp. So, you know, I, I'm i smart. Like, I'm not doing, like, sparring or, like, anything right. like that. I don't like, I, I like to save, save like, cer certain aspects for training camp. But, I mean, there's no reason you shouldn't be in the, in the, tra in the, your in the weight up. room or, you know, keep your cardio up or even technique. So, all I've been doing since my fight is rehab on my back, you know, work on my conditioning and strength and conditioning coach Jess Moore and hitting hitting with my coach Ian Loveland and Andy Minsker, just kind of sharpening the tools. So, so you know, there's always things you can do though. You know, and, and I got lucky with this last fight where it put me in a position where I can, you know, only train right now. So mm -hmm. I'm just. That's all I'm doing. I just line up training sessions throughout the day. And, uh, you know. dude, yeah, you'd probably be a little bit stressed, like if they went to decision, right? And they gave it to him. It's like, yeah. okay, debut. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, uh, so you're not, you're not not answering the phone call. No, no. I, uh, I'm, I'm at a point now where I feel like I'm healthy again. You know, my weight's back down. I, uh, you know, I got up to about like 174 there. <laughs> but, uh, but you know, that, I 174. Mean, that, yeah, that's like he gets to 135. <laughs> 40, but you know, usually I, I have a strict like under 155 rule, but that's like it's kind of hard to maintain. So I don't, yeah. you know, my body was redlining for so long. I'm kind of giving myself time, mm -hmm. time to, yeah. to decompress. So and do so you yeah, think so you'll answer the phone yeah. if it, and if it's a good opportunity, yeah. you're there. Yeah. So you. When you do that a little bit, like, okay, you feel like you're red light, and then you give it that big break. Let's say there's that little bit of time between you think 
that the next cut's going to be harder. Like, people are saying that about, like, McGregor, let's say, after he had his first idea. It's like, okay, he's going to go back to 45, and it's going to be a lot harder than him just consistently draining the fuck out of himself, you know? Yeah. Um, um, so, that my first fight back at 135 was Contender Series. I hadn't made 135 for over a year. Oh, so that was that was tough. It was, yeah. like, it was under three-week notice for... To, you know, I had a little over, like around thirty pounds to, to go, so that was tough. But you know, that was kind of a wake up call, telling myself, "Hey, let's." Yeah. Let's and and also like that was before you're in. Now I'm in. I you know I don't, you know it's not like I have to jump on every opportunity. Not not saying I won't. Yeah. Because yeah. I love money and I love fights. <laughs> so so, uh, but no, I, you know, I'm, you know, now I'm in a position now where I can train more and, and keep my weight down. I have the time to do so. So. You can be a little yeah, more if they call and it's you know it's enough time. You know I'm gonna stay ready. Mm -hmm. Awesome man. Awesome. Awesome. What do you like to do? I, I know you're a big advocate on CBD. Yeah, correct me if I'm wrong. On um, CBD, um, you know, to help uh, with your recovery and all that. I don't know. I don't. I, and you know, you guys know more about if, if if CBD is banned or not, or if you can use it, or you're just an advocate. It's out of competition. Okay. Um, if other can people. use it. In? Honestly, I'm not sure. I know out for sure. So they don't. They don't test for CBD. They yeah, test THC. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So a lot of a lot of companies. Um, claim to be 100% CBD, but a lot of those companies are lying. Yeah, you'll yeah. still, you know, test positive for THC. THC, so, right? So you got to be super careful about stuff like that. Um, but I mean, the benefits of CBD, you know, help with the anti, you know, inflammation, and uh, and, all, and what we're doing is like high impact. You know, we're mm -hmm. getting punched in the face for a living. So, so yeah, no, that, that I have a few different sponsors. Receptra, they sent me some tinctures. I have like a like a body lotion. From uh, Northwest Therapeutics, that's out of Vancouver, oh. Washington. Out of Vancouver, Washington? Yeah. Washington? Yeah. Hey, give yeah. them a shout out. What are they called again? Yeah. Yeah. Northwest yeah. Therapeutics. <laughs> North, uh, Northwest uh, Therapeutics? Uh, I will uh, check them out. Yeah. <laughs> Personally. And then, uh, also, Dean's Greens, right across the street from Dean's my gym. Dean's Greens. Right here. Is that yeah. Party with those boys last night, they're crazy. That's <laughs> where they were over in Lincoln City? So, yeah, they were over in Lincoln City. So, yeah, so, they, you know, we have, you know, great support system over here in Northwest with, yeah. uh, you know, so we, uh, yeah, especially we guys at Gracie Baja, we get, we hooked up those guys from mm -hmm. Dean's Green, so. Yeah, how, speaking of Gracie Baja, how is, uh, you don't have to go too in depth, I don't want you to rat him out, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, how's, it, how's it working with Chael, man, um, never met the guy, from what I've heard from guys like you and other friends I have that, uh, you know, Brandon over there, shout out to Brandon over at Double Barrel, um, that, that train with Chael and, well, no, I nothing but good things to say mm -hmm. about that guy and how supportive he is and how loyal and uh, he is to your guys' team. And I was uh, <laughs> just thinking of your either Snapchat or your Instagram story, Chael parked on the fucking sidewalk <laughs> in part of this. Chael Sonnen does whatever the fuck he wants. <laughs> yeah. Walking in the, the street. street. But how, how is it working? I'm, I'm sure you've been asked a million times, but <laughs> that guy, like I said, man, I've never heard anything but good things about how supportive he is and how bought in he is to... Uh, to, to his guys and his people. What's that like, man? Yeah, it, it was crazy at first, you know, so I came up fighting on, on the Roseland as yeah. an amateur, you know, he's, you know, co-owner of the, you know, those mm -hmm. fights, so, you know, I fought for three different titles for them, and I fought there as a pro as well, so I kind of like saw him in there, and I was, I was always called, you know, Star Show. Oh, yeah. 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 When we started training together, I had to act like I'm the line. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? So, uh, but no, he's he's been super supportive. It's, it's been crazy. It's, it's cool to have like veterans like that in the gym, you know, and kind of see how they train and see how they operate, and you know, see see what you right. should do and right. know, see what you, you know. I've, I've taken a lot away from you know what he does. Anytime I have a question, like you know, you know, first experience at UFC, first experience, you mm -hmm. know, you know, winning a bonus, this and yeah. that, you know. So I have a bunch of questions. I always text Joe for. For the, you know, uh, what are my taxes going to look like? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like, this, look, this sounds cool, so, but realistically, yeah. how much yeah. do I got? <laughs> how much money do I actually have, you know? Yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah. sure. Oh, that's smart. <laughs> so, no, so, yeah, so, you know, getting to learn from those guys, even like Ed Herman. I, and I first started with Mike Pierce and Pat Healy and Tyson mm -hmm. and Ian Loveland, you know, so mm -hmm. I started with those guys, so getting to see how they operate and, you know, it, it, it you know, you can't, I mean, it's awesome. Chill's, Chill's been everywhere he's fought. Anderson Silva, you know, one of the greatest of all time. And now to fight Fedor. Right? <laughs> right? Chill's going to win that tournament. No. Chill's, oh, Chill's going to win that heavyweight tournament. Is he not? Holy shit. Really? I, I don't know, so. man. I, I, I think it'll be Fedor, but it's weird. Bader is the problem, though. Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. to switch real quick. Yeah, yeah but, but he's, uh, like, I, like, 
like I said, I've heard only but good things about that guy, and it seems like he's just a real down to earth. Um, and he's a shit talker. You know, <laughs> everybody knows he's a he's shit talker the shit -talker. when he's promoting a fight. But what I've seen, you know, outside of that, is a real supportive, down to earth, blue collar dude yeah. who's uh, who's who's down down to help his own. Like, was there a first encounter that was? Do you have a story for when you met him, or is it just like? Hey, oh, yeah, that was it. Oh, the first time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. the first time I met him. Check this out. <laughs> 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 this, this was. All right, Jake Smith, fuck you. <laughs> All right. So Jake and I are both fighting for titles at the Rosalind. Uh, you know, we we get there early. We just did uh, the referees meeting. We decided to you know go pick up our uh, the workout room in the Rosalind in the back, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, there's this room that says um, uh, off limits, do not enter, or whatever. Yeah. And uh, Jake's like, I'm gonna go in here anyways. Well, of course. So he, starts, like, he starts trying to get in this room, you know, like so he's trying to open the door, or whatever, making a commotion. <laughs> Friggin' Al Pop's chill. <laughs> was it was his room? Yeah, it was, and, then, and then Jake goes like this. Uh, 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 uh. He stutters like four times and then just walks away. That, just la that, that was our first encounter. Oh, that was our, oh, like, oh. And Chell was so nice. He's like, hey boys, how you doing? <laughs> Jake just, uh, 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 yeah, down. Mr. Sonnen. Yeah. Yeah. So, that was our oh, first encounter. Cool. He probably doesn't even remember that, huh? Yeah, probably not. <laughs> what, what? That's great, that's so man. Good. <laughs> Jake Smith, I hope you hear this. Who are you Jake? Starstruck. Uh, <laughs> well, I hope Jell hears it and <laughs> give Jake a little shit. Uh, what about your first time meeting him as as peers? All right, as as peers who are going to train together um, and train, you know, out of the, out of the same organization. Um, how was that, man? Like, hey, this is Jell. Did you guys jump right into it and you just start rolling around? Did he, how was it, man? Oh, uh, first time I like. Kind of talked to him in the gym was uh he came over to Rose City to use our cage to spar, getting ready to fight. He'd bring like Bomba and a couple of their guys. Um, so, uh, so I think one of my teammates, uh, Tyson Nam, actually introduced me to him. Okay. He's like, oh, chill. If you don't know this, Rick Simone, you know, he he's coming up. You know, I think I was maybe like one and I was a pro or something. And Chill kind of looked at me. He's like, I know you. He's like, you fought you fought at the Rosen, right? And I was like, <laughs> yeah. For, you know, so that, that was that was like the first time in the gym that I talked to him. And uh, you know, it. it it, it's so cool. It's so it's so cool to see him train and like, you know, he he brings in guys, he brings in coaches. You know, he you know, and, that, and that's kind of like what I want to be able to do. I want to be able to like just just train. You know, for focus on certain aspects and you know just just live the fighter yeah. life. You know. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy, man. That's crazy. Do you still get nervous when you meet guys like that? Meet legends in the sport because you're in it. You know, and and you're knee deep in it. Is it is it just like it's just another guy who's a legend and. Something you can learn from, or you do you still get starstruck? Uh, not really. I just always, for some reason, I just feel like I, I want to. I feel like I belong there, and I want to mm -hmm. act like I belong there. So, I mean, uh, besides like, there's a few people that I looked up to since I first started watching. You know, like Diego Sanchez. Mm -hmm. I went out and trained with him. It was like two years ago now. You uh, did? I yeah. Know you did that. I, was, I, went, yeah. I went out and stayed at Cowboy Cerrone's house. And stayed at his house. Yeah, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, for a few weeks. Yeah. Bro, you, you got, got the ranch. ranch. Yeah, you got the ranch. Nah, you gotta <laughs> tell. You gotta tell. You check with Diego Sanchez and Cerrone. Cowboy Cerrone. Yeah, so I stayed at some stories. <laughs> so I said, first of all, yeah, the, Cerrone is crazy as they say. Yeah. He goes hard. It's crazy. He he, he literally is like nonstop. Like, don't hold back. Goes, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> no, but, I don't want a vague uh, overview. So, so <laughs> Cerrone and Pat Healy are like good buddies. Oh, yeah. oh okay. Uh, uh, Pat Healy and I went to uh, went on an Armed Forces Entertainment tour together for Titan. We, so we were over in Kuwait for a few weeks. Yeah. And, you know, we got to know, you know, we trained together, but we were just like, you know, buddies in the gym. But, yeah. you know, we, we spent that time outside the gym together. And he's like, oh, come come with me to the ranch. So uh, we got back. We got back from Kuwait. And I took him up on I was like, yeah, I'm going. Thanks for sure. So, <laughs> so, uh, so I went and, you know, I got some great training over there. I got to train with Dotson, you know, and oh, I nice. got to spar with Diego Sanchez. And it was so cool. Pat Healy was a homie because he knew, like, Diego Sanchez was one of my idols growing up, so when I was sparring with him, he's like taking photos for me. <laughs> for, you to, for you to have, yeah. yeah. So Diego was probably the only guy ever was like, man, can I get a photo? Like I, I asked him, like I'm gonna get a photo with Diego. <laughs> but like everyone else, like I, I don't, I didn't ask for a photo. Like I was there with John Jones and you know even Cowboy and all them. Like yeah. I, I want to feel like, you know, I, I, I belong here, you know. Yeah. So well, yeah, you do, man. You that. definitely do. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate How's, it. How's uh? That's the truth, man. How's um? How how's your your corner? Right, uh, you know, I haven't. Who's in your corner first off when you fight? Let's say this last Many fight. Many choices for coaches. Right. Well, I'm not asking who yeah. specifically. No, yeah. no, 
is is uh, in your corner, right? Uh, what are they like, man? And and how supportive and how how instrumental have they been to your success? And when you're out there fighting, can you hear them? Are you listening? Can you actually hear them? Right. Are you um, you know are you able to hear them quick enough to adjust and utilize what they're telling you to do? Um, and you know I've heard I've heard from your uh, a few of your coaches at like your post fight parties we've we've gone to and whatnot of you know them traveling with you and missing their flights or almost <laughs> missing their flights or one had a different flight than the other three of you like the shit's not glamorous and I, and I, no offense but I don't think people realize that it's a fucking grind right and it takes <laughs> it takes uh, you know a fucking village to to get you there and you know and then you're in there fighting and. And I don't think people see what happens behind the scenes. And it sounds like, you know, what they do is, is a huge part of your success. Like, so I know that's a lot to throw at you to, to speak on, but if you can remember, <laughs> please uh, well, just talk about that, man. Because it sounds really interesting that people don't see that shit. Well, I've had uh, Ian Loveland as a coach since, uh, since I first moved over to Portland. I'm back in Vancouver now, but when I first started training with them, uh, so right, right before I turned pro. So he's been working with me and kind of helped me on my stand-up game overall. For overall, really overall, my overall MMA game, uh, he's he's such a he's probably the best coach I've ever worked with, and I've worked with coaches all around the world. You know, I've worked with I, you know Greg Jackson, Winkle John, Bang. I've you know I've I've been I've been all over training. Yeah. I still feel like Ian Loveland. Loveland. Yeah, I still feel like Ian Loveland has just he he's the best coach. He you put he'll put you in any situation and he'll like have technique to get you know. So it's just stuff you don't even think about. So I, I really feel like he's the best MMA coach I've ever worked with. And also, I've been training with you know Fabiano mm -hmm. the last couple of years, and he's really, you know, bumped my jiu-jitsu up. And uh, Andy Minsker, who's you know, uh, I think he was in the limp, you know, I think I don't know if he, was, I think he was in the Olympic trials for boxing, but he's been my, my boxing coach for a while. Uh, and uh, so, so I have a, I have a great yeah, team, look it up. great team behind me. And, uh, <laughs> uh, Tyson Nam and Fabiano were my corner for that that, that last fight. And, okay. Uh, so so Fabiano, I'm gonna have Fabiano is a great. Great coach overall. Everyone thinks he's just a jiu-jitsu guy, but he fought. He fought all over the world. He fought in the UFC. You know, he, he's fought everywhere too. So he has. He's a great MMA Legit coach as well. Yeah. yeah. So I, so I have a great corner, and uh, so you know. So the reason I train over in Hawaii too is they they got some training over there too, and I feel like it's good to mix that up. Yeah. So you know, so I, I feel like I don't think I need over in Portland, but sometimes you need that no. you need that switch up a little bit. So so I get and I feel like I get that over there in Hawaii. How's your travel? Um, quick pee, quick pee, yeah, yeah, sorry. great. I, uh, you, you, you fought on a Saturday night, right? And on Sunday night, we were over at Heathen Brewing drinking beers. Yeah. What? Well, did you fucking fly home from Atlantic City across the United States? Well, yeah. What's that like? Do you have your flight booked before, or do you book it after? Because like, if you get you know in a battle where you're fucked up and you're like, is it safe to fly? Like, yeah. where? Uh, what's that like? Well, the UFC books it all for you, okay. you know, so you, they, they have your five book, you know, year round, you know, from when you leave to when you go home. So okay. uh, I had a really shitty flight on the way home, too. I was supposed to get home at midnight. And, uh, you get and home I, here? Yeah. On Sunday at midnight? Like, yeah. Like, yeah, the next, yeah, so I was going to be. Okay. So. So you so, changed it. Yeah. Because so. <laughs> you got way earlier than that. Yeah, so we were at the after party. They announced I got the flight of the night. Oh, oh no! Like, I like, can't afford a flight. Fuck so like, oh, you, New Jersey! I'm going home. I saw that. <laughs> so shit. I actually like got the next flight out. So I was at the after party. I ended up going and packing and leaving. So yeah, because you got home. I mean, I saw on your shit. You were you were flying home early, early morning. I got home like at ten in the morning. Yeah, I was, you, at the after party, I was still like I was still a little drunk, but flying home. So <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I, I just want to be home. Like, yeah, I'm you seem like a you. guy that's like that, man. You want to go in, handle your business, and get the fuck out. Yeah, like yeah. Uh, like like you know, I don't know a lot of guys that. You're in Atlantic City, man. <laughs> like, you just you just made a uh, you know x amount of dollars, and a lot of guys I know will stay a couple extra days, right? Yeah. And you're like, nah, I need to go home. But yeah. you also been living like that, where you gotta right to the next one. Yeah, right been, next it, one. it was a crazy, it was a crazy like year, even. You yeah. know, I was just like traveling, and yeah. you know, I didn't get any downtime, so just going yeah. home and just relaxing just sounded so nice. So yeah. I got the first flight out of New Jersey. He was saying, man, he uh, <laughs> what is uh. UFC sets up all his flights, and mm -hmm. he's supposed to fly out late Sunday night and get home about midnight. Mm -hmm. 
When he got fired of the night, he bought his own fucking <laughs> He bought his own here. Yeah, no, I, I know it's rude to talk about other people's finances and stuff, but since this shit is public, um, what is uh, what's it, what is USC's now? You guys will know probably um, their minimum. Um, oh, first, oh, because we were talking about that with Dave. Yeah, what, like, you know. Dave was saying. Well, let's just, let's just, oh, let's just, yeah, let's <laughs> just hear it. Um, you know, um, yeah, minimum, they pay a fighter. What's their minimum? I think their minimum is 10 and 10. Like 10 to show, 10 to win. Yeah. I thought, Dave, Dave was saying it went up to 30, 30, and I was like... Okay. But the fight of the night is 50? Yeah. yeah. Every, uh, a performance of the night, right? Is that what they call it? No, now? they have two performances and one fight. And then yeah. one fight of the yeah. night. So yeah. fight of the night, both guys get it. Performance of the night is yep. per person. Yep, yep. Okay. Yep. Okay, so that's 50. Yeah. So, people, we know it. Ricky Simone at least made 60,000 in one night. <laughs> <laughs> that motherfucker bought himself a plane ticket out to <laughs> Atlantic City. Yeah, yeah. What do you what do you do for fun? You're a Pacific Northwest guy. I'm sure you're you like hiking. You like the outdoor stuff. Um, you know, you said fuck fuck Atlantic City. The fuck New Jersey. Let's get out of there. That was so right? funny, man. That was <laughs> fine. Yeah, you said that, not me. You said it. Keep their cheese steaks. Yeah, yeah they can keep their cheese steaks. Um, they were fucking booing me. What the hell? I know. <laughs> Freaking got my ass kicked for you guys. <laughs> you know? Well, I guess they fought a local, right? He so trains out of there. Yeah. But, um, you know, it seems like you, you like the outdoors. Uh, yeah. What's the... I've seen you in Hawaii, loving the beach, loving the outdoor cardio. Uh, what's, what's Ricky Simone like to do outside of fighting, man? Yeah? I, well, I, I would always say my favorite thing to do is travel and eat food I can't afford. That's my, <laughs> that's my favorite thing, so... Yeah, so... But... I, I, I like to, uh, I, I definitely like to explore, especially when I'm like in Hawaii, I like to go on different hikes and find different, you know, get, see what, what kind of trail we can get into, but uh, also I have like, I have a bunch of brothers, I have four brothers, four or five brothers, and they're oh, all, wow. they're all freaking nerds, they all game, so I, I'm trying to fit in, I like, I'm like, That's oh, like you play pub. Play? So I'm like, yeah, yeah, so I'm like trying to get good at video games and stuff, and I suck at everything. You won but, that one you posted. Yeah, 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 yeah of course. Of course. Of course. Of course. Of course. Yeah, what is it? He did win. Yeah, oh, man. I, died, so I was running duos. I died. My buddy won. So <laughs> really? Our, our <laughs> team won. I didn't win. So <laughs> the team won. But you know, I Sunshine's figured, is gonna laugh at this. Yeah. Like, no, so like, Sunshine games. Dude, huh? he's the man. At he's pose. good, right? Yeah, oh. I hear, yeah, I hear he's ridiculously pose. good. Pose. Really? I can't play with him. Won't play with him. Gonna get a certain amount of kills. Yeah. So you pretend a game. If you like the outdoors, you like to travel, you like to eat expensive ass good food. What's your favorite kind of food, man? Uh, French food. French food? French French food. food. Oh, throw it at me. Yeah. Like what? The confit on my favorite no meal. Clue. Ooh, look at the, he got the accent on the point. Is that how much he likes yeah, it? Yeah, say it those boys. <laughs> <laughs> say, it. say it again, Ricky. So um, what, what is it? Yeah, it's called duck confit. Okay. And what is it? I don't even know that's how you say it. But, <laughs> uh, what is it, man? It's just duck, and I think uh, confit's house made, so it's like mm -hmm. slow roasted in its own fat. Oh, so it's like sounds like tender. Yeah, me so sunbathing. <laughs> My favorite restaurant in Portland is uh, Le Pigeon. Le Pigeon. I'm gonna have you text me this when we're yeah, done so. here, for real. So yeah, check it I out. I love it's expensive good. That's, that's my go-to. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, but that's my favorite favorite thing to do is uh, so food French food. Board. French <laughs> food. Yeah. What yeah. kind? Because you hear, oh, I like Mexican food. I like Italian food. Yeah, basic. What the <laughs> fuck is French food? <laughs> Uh, what? What? Because it? Italian, right? It's pasta, it's pizza, right? Mexican, you know, you got your tacos, your enchiladas, right? It's like well, you got Japanese food or Chinese food with your noodles and your, what is French like? What do they know? What's their base? They do like what weird stuff with the meat, pretty much, right? Kind of. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. I don't know. Like, I'm saying, this is fucking good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. I've never it's been. Snails, okay. <laughs> but I mean, is it, is it when you like when you order stuff? Is it? Like, you know, you eat Italian food, it's a lot of pasta, it's a lot of bread, it's a lot of carbs, right? Like, what is French food? Know, what, what are the, uh, what are the, is it like a lot of meat on the dishes? What is it? That's what, I mean, it, they seem like smaller portions, but they okay. seem to really, like, focus on the way they cook it. Uh, like, it has a lot of, like, they, they do a lot of, like, flavors and stuff. Attention to detail. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, I can't wait. No, seriously, I'm going to have you text me that. I'm going to hit it up later. Yeah, no, I will. <laughs> You're ready to drop some money, though. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I mean, if you're good on time, we can still like talk. If you watch the fights today, we can get into that. Did you watch the fights? I today? was traveling. I was driving back oh, yeah. home, so oh, okay. I, wa I watched the uh, uh, Gina fight. Okay. Uh, yeah. I traveled with her a little bit when I went over to Extreme. Yeah, just, that fight was not great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. She, she seemed 
I mean, I thought she was gonna be able to out wrestle it, out wrestle, but I mean, she. That was one of those fights where, so I scored it a draw. Okay, so I gave the first round to uh, her opponent, Lena, and then the second round was ten ten, because you know when it's when the round comes down to positional, you know, the position of I'm pushing this a little bit, but you get what I'm saying. Uh, it's kind of like. Who has the better position? Yeah, the can you really score? Like, so it was the new. Who has the dominant position yeah, for the longest the, amount of The fights time. were in uh, Liverpool, so England, and they had the new rules. And the new rules don't rely on um, grappling as much as striking. They're a little bit, you know, fan friendly and whatnot. So there was a, that fight was super clinchy and like, yeah, uh, what we call it uh, cage. Um, cage control? Are you, are you yeah, yeah, yeah. It was pretty much a cage control fight. So. It's like kind of a, a dead, uh, dead area. So it was just like, you know, like it's just a ten ten. Nobody really won it because that was pretty much all that happened. You know, no damage. Um, so yeah, it's just not great. <laughs> so, but but you know, yeah, that, that was yeah, that was the only one I I was trying to catch that one just because you know I you know I follow her on Instagram, follow, you know, and, yeah, and yeah. I trained with her a little bit. But other than that, I was like, I had to get back home. Dude, you know, hang out with you guys. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh, you need to go run at the gym. I was trying to see the highlights on uh, Twitter and stuff like that. So. Yeah. 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 I was hearing that uh, people weren't too happy with the, uh, the main yeah. event. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, that was also... It was one of those fights where it was... People are calling it a robbery, but when it's... Everyone was super duper close. So it was like, okay, this guy edged this one, he edged that one. Is it really robbery when it's... Edges every single round, you know. Yeah. So yeah, Darren Till beat Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. Uh, he got 49, 46 twice, and then 48, 47. I scored it 48, 47 for Wonderboy. Gave him. I don't get to the rounds, <laughs> but I, he had won it in my opinion. But it was every round was so fucking close because you know how these guys fight, right? Yeah. And you yeah. watch enough, so and. I don't think Till won, but he definitely proved that he is an elite. He belongs. Because we know how good one boy is. Obviously, one boy, one boy, one boy. he's one of the best strikers of all time, just period. And Till hung with him and dropped him in the fifth round. Oh, he, he did drop yeah, him? Yeah, he dropped oh, him. So Ooh, I got something I want to talk about with you, though. Know, <laughs> so Speaking it, of people yeah. getting dropped. <laughs> Tell we didn't touch him. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> yeah, so it was, it was just one of those fights where... So, yeah, it was just everyone was super close. You can really call that a robbery. So I guess the question I'll give to you then, when it's the fight's close as fuck, but maybe let's say one guy edged out every round. It's not a robbery, you know. No. So I guess that's, that's all it is. <laughs> yeah, no, no, yeah I, no, I agree. If it's that close and yeah. you know someone pushes towards the end, that's what it, everyone knows. That's what the judges kind of mm -hmm. look at. But also, I saw like the the punt, or the strike count. Mm -hmm. And I'll freeze around. I was like, holy what? shit. What? What? Yeah, dominate? Like, no, it was like it was like four or five. Yeah. Oh, they were really, really, really close. Don't do, it was nothing. Like it, it was, was like, but there were like no strikes. They were not, striking each other. It was. It was. was it one of the most chess match fights I think just I've ever played distance, right? Uh, like, no, were they getting booed? I I no, no, I watch it though. So no, I, I, I was just getting till. He was in his hometown, dude. That crowd was like a fucking soccer field, man. Really? It was so... His walkout... Where was it? It was in Liverpool. Oh, uh, that's why it was at like 6 a.m. Yeah. our time. Yeah, no, it was it was crazy atmosphere. They weren't booing at all. But no, it was total distance. It was so, so technical. Like, people were like, boring as fuck, you know, Wonder Boy fuck. But if you understand fighting. But, dude, I loved that fight. For your casual, it might be Yeah, the casuals hated that fight. Like, like, Cameron, but, uh, God. like Cameron. He's going to be like, do something. No, yeah, it was it was super low strike count because it was all about they're so timing oriented, counter striking, and it was just really close. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. you just gotta watch it if you can. Yeah, well, yeah, you know, <laughs> once we get on uh, Joe Rogan's level, we'll have a, a TV we'll set up. up. We'll have a monitor yeah. set up. Well, hey, hang in, hey, assistant, like, pull it up. Okay. <laughs> hey, Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, and like before I even say it, he's got it pulled up. <laughs> I got you really excited. Um, no, 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 I don't want to bounce anything off you. I just wanted to uh, bring up somebody got dropped in their last fight and they ended up winning. Right? They actually broke <laughs> some more of this. They broke, <laughs> <laughs> they broke a record. They actually broke a record and they won. Yeah. All right, so props to them. Yes. But I've never that seen that. I've that never seen this guy. Like <laughs> <laughs> never seen this guy get dropped before. 
right? That's one time, but we don't talk about that. But we, this other <laughs> time, we've never seen this guy get dropped before, and he recovered really well, right? But I heard a rumor has it he got fucking flashed, right? He got We're dropped. Not talk about he, this. he got he got dropped. <laughs> And uh, after the fight, or after that round, one of the two, rumor has it that, you know, his cage said something about it. And, or his corner, I mean, said something about it, and he didn't even know he got dropped. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want a little insight on that. Yes, this is true. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but... First of all, I'd like to congratulate you on... This is the 100th time we hung out, and yes, you <laughs> brought up you Lucy. Yes! Six times, hey. 100 times in a row. People, cheers, 100 times. So. I'm not uh, going to... Yeah, yeah. I had to throw it in there. I had to throw it in there. Uh, we're not going to talk about that so part. I felt so shitty last time. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we're not going to pick it up. Uh, we're not going to talk yeah, about that. He's like... No, you no, 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 no. <laughs> he was like, are you serious, man? <laughs> no. And then last time he brought it up. I know. And I was like, bro. Anyways, we're not going to talk about that. You guys talked about it more than I planned on. Okay? <laughs> but... On, uh, for real, um, <laughs> for people not understanding the inside joke that we got going on, is Ricky got dropped in this, this last fight against uh, Marab, right? Marab. Um, yeah, that guy. And the guy that lost. And uh, um, the scariest shit, seeing him get dropped, but he recovered quickly. I think he grabbed a leg. Right? Yeah, yeah, honestly, um, I thought that was it. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah it was scary, right? Um, <laughs> but you grabbed his leg and you recovered, right? But we talked about after, at, I think, the next night after your, at your post fight party celebration that that you didn't even know you got dropped. It's autopilot. Yeah, you went into autopilot and your corner brought it up either in between yeah. rounds or after the fight, and you're like, what? I got dropped? What's yeah. that like, dude? Like, uh, like, think about I know it's all a blur, but think back to moments before it. And then what like you the last thing you remember? What's the last thing you remember <laughs> before, and then the first thing you remember after? Like, do you remember holding on a leg? What's that like, dude? Yeah. So we he told, so we were walking out. He's like, yeah. He, Tyson told me, he's like, yeah, he dropped you, or whatever. In this fight, he like, after the fight, yeah, like, we we're walking. Yeah, we're walking back out. Walking out. I was like, he's like, but you recovered really good. I looked up. I was like, I got dropped. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I, I thought I got rocked. I remember getting rocked. So so yeah, you me, I got hit. I remember getting hit by the punch, and then I remember going like this, and I remember like dodging, you know, like counter, you know, like just making a miss. Up against the cage, so I'm like, oh, I can see the punches coming, but uh, my legs are on the wall. I'm like, oh, I know I'm rocked now. Mm -hmm. So, but the whole in between me going on a single leg and doing all that, yeah, you I don't on. remember any of that. So, <laughs> autopilot, right? I got single legs even even when I'm. Uh, you know, <laughs> I can do that shit in my too, though. So. I can do that shit in my you, sleep. So. Well, this, like no, literally yeah, in your sleep. The right? number one autopilot story I always remember is. You saw Frank Mir no Garrett too, right? Where he broke his arm up here. At, he said he was on autopilot the whole time after he got dropped in that round. So oh, right. everything after he got dropped, including the Kimura, he said was autopilot. I was like, hey, wait, which one? Uh, Frank Mir on. Oh, he was on. Oh, okay. When okay. he did it to him, oh. I was like, when he won. Holy That's shit! Crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you really think about that, because he got dropped against the cage. And then, you know, went for the takedown and shit. And it was like a full minute after that, maybe a minute at 30, and he ends up winding up in this insane Kimura, breaks his arm. It is like, what, you, yeah. you don't remember doing that, dude? Yeah. You, you might be a murderer. <laughs> Frank Mir, dude. Fuck, I should have golfed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man. <laughs> Smitty's gonna have to have no CTE. <laughs> Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, man. Well, shit, man. Uh, thanks. You know, unless you got something, something to add. Um, we're going over time. Been good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're going over time. Um, yeah, man. But but it's time to eat. Yeah. Yeah. All right, buddy. I'd like, thank you. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Thanks for joining first us, everybody. Guest. Uh, yeah, first guest. Yeah. Ricky Simone. <laughs> Um, you know, you almost got to see him at UFC 227. Hey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, nothing confirmed, but uh, we're gonna we're gonna call it, it now. now yeah. We're gonna call it now. <laughs> timestamp this shit, just like you can timestamp Ricky Simone calling out Lil Benito before Lil Benito called out him, <laughs> right? Yeah. So don't fucking post shit like so on the contract. Like motherfucker, I called out you. Yeah. Don't try to flip it. Let's just let him think he's he's in control. Right? Yeah, I got Max for the puppets yeah. over here. Right? He's small. Just, that was so he's funny. already in the back of his head working on his next fight. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. What's up? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh shit. I got. I wanted to get your quick prediction, dude. Okay. Let's hear it. Uh, next week, Jimmy Rivera, Marlon Moraes. That fight, I love that fight. Dude. Your division. Yeah. Who you got? I got Rivera. Really? Yeah, I do. Uh, I think. 
he's a great counter striker and he he keeps a great pace. I don't know. I just feel like Marla. I don't know. I just don't feel like he can keep up. I don't think he'll be able to keep Man, up. Man, okay, I, I agree with you, but it's like I just feel like Marlon's gonna catch him. You know, it's just, one of those feelings. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's good, but I, maybe I'm just thinking no of that Sterling what, fight. That's no what matter I what, I'm gonna be biased because Marlon beat Tyson. So yeah, no exactly. Well, I'm, I'm so good that one. He's, <laughs> he's on the hit list. Don't worry about that. We'll see him soon too. Great point. Great point. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I, I want to know, right, again, before we wrap this up, I want to I want to You're going to call it right now? Who are you going to know? Man, um, that's the same card as the Manaweight yeah, no. <laughs> I, I want to know, man, who is, in your opinion, who is the most exciting fighter to watch? Like, when you hear they're fighting, you're like, i got to watch that, right? Whether any weight class, any, you know, like I guess any division, men's, women's, like, who are you like? I don't miss their fights because that shit's fun. There's only one answer for me, but I'll yeah. yeah, all right. Well, no, let's have Drake go. Just engage you. Oh. Okay. No, I want to hear Ricky. I want to hear Ricky. <laughs> well, like as a fighter, there's a bunch of people. Doesn't even have to be UFC. Yeah. No, that I want to watch fight, but I mean, we can't like ignore like the biggest draw. Yeah. Like, oh, are you really? You can't. Like if Con if Conor McGregor is there, it fight, is. You're gonna you're gonna you're watch gonna him fight. Watch it. You're gonna watch him fight. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. You can't. Not I'm not gonna pretend like I'm oh. Oh, who's that? No. Yeah, you're, you're not a hipster. <laughs> if he's gonna watch, if he's gonna fight, I'm gonna watch. Right, but okay. I mean, there, there are plenty of guys that that, so, I, uh, that so. when they fight, I'm like, holy shit, those guys are, you know. So, they, so that sounds like that's a like, Ricky Simone is a fan. He's gonna watch Conor McGregor fight, right? Now I want to know, Ricky Simone is a fighter. Ricky Simone is a fighter where you're trying to learn something mm, okay. and you're trying to digest a style. Right? Not biggest draw, not this shit's the highest seller. Like, I gotta watch this. This like is he's kind of like, himself. Yeah, this is one of the fighters of my generation that I gotta watch. This is one of the, you know, like watching Muhammad Ali. Like, you're not gonna miss Muhammad Ali. That's Conor McGregor. I get that. Yeah. Now, as a fighter, Ricky Simone is the student and a fighter. I'm not you studying tape, but just you're so excited you're gonna watch it live. I'm gonna watch, I'm gonna learn. Like, is there anybody that you watch where you're like, that's what's up? Uh, always Diego, just because he's there freaking, we go. he's a. <laughs> Savage. He's crazy. <laughs> crazy. He's legit crazy. So, like, like how he acts is like how I feel, but I'm not like that crazy to act that way, you know. So, but uh, so him, Cain Velasquez, and I, I might just be biased because I'm Mexican, but I mean, <laughs> those are like two of my favorite fighters. Yeah, but, but, but also Frank Edgar. <laughs> Frank Edgar, like he's someone I've been like copying since I was since I was an amateur. Okay. Every time he fights, I'm like, oh, I'm like kind of picking stuff that he's doing. Yeah. So uh, I mean, I mean, but there, there's a there there are a bunch of guys, a bunch of. Really good fighters and other promotions too that I'm like, holy shit, those guys are good. So, all right, all right. Yeah, but those well, are those are like some of the some of the guys that I've always watched. You know? I, I got one more thing for you. I know I was trying to wrap it up, but I we can't. wrapped it up and then we're yeah, I can't. I can't. <laughs> yeah. That's what editing's for. Cheers. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, I heard a story. Um, <laughs> Smitty. No, 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 I heard a story. About, this is, no, it's a good story. I heard a story about Ricky Simone. Um, for those of you that don't know him or are listening, watching. This guy, I've known for years, and I, my business did sponsor him, and he, I was just about to say how humble this motherfucker is, <laughs> and he flexes on camera. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? Well, that's a wrap, folks. That's a wrap. Thanks for watching. Is that white screen? Or yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Motherfucker. That's great. Gosh, damn. I don't know if you knew, knew I was going to do that. You tried to ruin it. I thought it was coming. Oh, oh, this is an asshole. No, for, not, for you guys to no, no. <laughs> Ricky Simone, I've known him for years. Um, I sponsored him, my business sponsored him. And not just because we wanted to sponsor someone or, you know, he gets great exposure, but because of the, the quality human being that, that you are. Um, and Ricky is one of the, the most humble guys I've ever known, can kiss, kick 99% of people's asses in any given room at any given time um, and walks around like you never know it, right? And so I heard a story um, well, hold on, let me backtrack. I like to say when this guy, when this, when this guy fought on uh, is the Contender Series, yeah. um, and, and you won, you got a little, you know, sign. What do you, what, what did you, what did you say when they interviewed you? You said something about like give me the contract or something. Talking to Laura. Right? You, you might have said something about just you know I'm ready, give me the contract, I'm ready to sign something, and I was like. All right, he's getting there, because this guy didn't talk. This guy wasn't a talker. He let his actions speak for him, right? And I honestly, my, my you know, humble opinion is that you, that's why it took you so long, right? And there's nothing wrong with that, dude. There's nothing wrong with that from, like, like the, the talent, 
right, was there for you to get signed to the UFC two years ago, right? Um, and it's business, it's entertainment business, right? But yeah, when I saw you, you know, after the Contender Series, you, you, you hyped it a little bit, right? Um, and then I think after your first LFA defense, <laughs> you did a little bit, and then you stood over the guy and did the cutthroat, right? And I was like, okay, yeah, he's both. getting there. Oh, <laughs> did you, were, did, were you with me when I watched that? Yeah, you were like, dude, look at him with this personality. I was like, holy <laughs> fuck, Ricky's coming out of his shell. <laughs> holy <laughs> fuck, because you I know you got it in there. You're just, <laughs> let me circle back around. Ricky Simone is one of the humblest dudes I've ever met, right? And you take in, when you take into consideration the shit he can do to people, Right, like I said, any given room at any given time, he could kill 99% of the people there with his <laughs> bare hands, right? And so he's just he's just one of the most humble dudes I've ever met, and so I I I uh, it means a lot to me, right? And uh, I really value that about you, right? Now with that being said, I've heard a story of Ricky Simone getting almost getting in a fight with a guy on the street in Portland, where you either guillotined him or you rear naked choked him. Oh, okay. you know, and you that. gave him the chance to, hey man, I don't want to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm paraphrasing. I don't want to kill you, but I will. <laughs> but you, but you, you quite like, basically the guys you got to worry about are the ones that are quiet, right? Because you're so humbly confident that, that people wouldn't know what you're capable of. Right? But you're not out there looking for fights, you're not an asshole, you're not bragging and boasting about, hey, look what I can do. Right? I, just, I, I have heard a story about something in that realm, you know what I'm talking about, can you, can you tell us what happened there? I actually don't know all the details. <laughs> but I know you have you saved a guy's life because you didn't kill him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I, I'm like, anti-confrontation so? to the max on Facebook. Okay. Like, I, I, I never get in like, uh, street fights or anything like that. Um, I get beat up, beat up enough in the gym. So. Yes. Um, but I uh, know uh, I'll stay my girlfriend to a nice French dinner. Of course, <laughs> French. Really? Full circle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Full yeah. circle. You know, you know the name of the restaurant? Huh? You know the name of the restaurant? Uh, uh, Le Pigeon. <laughs> Same one. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So, I swear to anybody listening yeah, and watching, I did not know this. Yeah, no, we we were going there uh, for the first time actually, and um, I don't know what happened. Some guy. Uh, I was in, like in the middle of the road, and I like you know I kind of like told him, hey dude, get out of the road, and then you know that's it. And I drove, I parked, and then I go to get out of the car. My girlfriend's like, oh Ricky, and he like grabs me by the neck and pushes me from behind. Me. Like I, as I get out, like, I close my door, I turn, uh -huh. he like grabs me by the neck, and I just like put my hands over like on his el you know inside of his elbow like this, and I'm just like this kind of like, and he's like yelling at me, calling me like you know like fag and all this stuff, and I'm like what the hell. Yeah. I'm dressed nice too, you know. I'm wearing. Is, I'm wearing. I'm wearing. Going to Le Pigeon. I'm wearing like my nice. Oh, I think asshole. I'm wearing my nice watch and everything. I'm like, oh crap. So, so I just put my hands over top of him. I'm like, what's going on here? And then he just cocks back and ready to swing. And I was like, oh shit. I didn't have time to react. So I just kind of like ducked under it. I like, picked him up. And this guy was like pretty did tall. He, did he connect at all? No, no, I ducked under it. <laughs> I didn't have any time to no, die, but I definitely got it. <laughs> so I the head move. That's how on. good he is. So I had like a, a body lock, like one of his arms trapped. He had one free arm, and I'm just like, we're like in the middle of the road, so I'm like carrying him to the sidewalk. You literally just carried him. Yeah. So my my, my girlfriend tells the story that she's on the other side. She just sees this guy floating, like <laughs> oh, right, right, see you. around my truck. So then I just kind of dump him, and I have both his arms pinned. I'm like, hey, dude, like, hey, let's chill out. And then he starts like trying to headbutt me and like try to bite me. So then I. Just, so I, just know, like, I so I just kind of like, boom, hit him one time <laughs> in the face. It's like, boom, and then I just see it in his eye, and she's like, oh, God, yeah. Wow, that like, was hard. I don't, think I've ever, I don't know if he's ever never been punched or what, but he's just like, kind of gave me his back, just turned around. <laughs> so I just put him in a choke, and I just like, kind of held it, and then like, felt him kind of going in and out, and I just set him down. I'm like, hey, dude, like, I don't want, like, let's not. I'm like, I'm like, I got, and I, what I told him was like, we can chill here till the cops come, or we can just stand up and I'll shake. We shake hands and we just yeah. go on our ways, you know. Like you had a problem with me, like I don't know why, but let, let's just get, it. let's just end it. Right. So he stood up. He like shook my hand, looked at my robe, and told her sorry, and then, and then walked yeah. away. So. Well, that's the kind of guy for people listening. That's the kind of guy Ricky Simone is. All right, humble, fair. And no cops. No cops. <laughs> no. <laughs> You're like, hey, no drink, dude. <laughs> no, no, but, um, you know, definitely could have killed this dude. Could have killed this dude. Well, yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, or, or you're, you're a real dude. You're a nice dude. And, and 
You represent, like I've told you multiple times, I like to put it on the record here, you represent the Pacific Northwest amazingly, man. I've been a huge fan of yours, not just from being your friend and being a sponsor, but like I've told you, man, you are the perfect person to represent the Pacific Northwest. You're calm, you're quiet, but you will fucking kill somebody. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're blue collar, you're calm, you're quiet, you love the outdoors, like you are the perfect person to represent this part of the country. All right, and I love, what I love about you, man, is that you don't claim to be from Portland. You're Vancouver, right? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> Vancouver, <laughs> Vancouver is Portland's little brother. Vancouver has also right. been known as the armpit of Portland, right? <laughs> but you're not going on there on, you know, in, in worldwide on UFC and telling people, I'm from Portland, Oregon, just to, you know, get a little more, you know, recognition that you're from a big city. You're from Vancouver, Washington, right? And you rep that, and I feel like you'll rep that till the day you die. And, and shout out to Rick Story, he does that too. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're, the, you're the you're the perfect. Rick Story's our train with us too. So hey, oh, yeah. you're, the perfect, you're the perfect person to rep the, the Pacific Northwest the, and this city, <gasps> this city uh, specifically, man. So um, you know, on that note, appreciate that, man. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you coming by. Can everybody follow you, Rick? Uh, I got a fan page on Facebook, Ricky Simone, and I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Ricky Simone UFC. Ooh! <laughs> All right, Thank you. Thanks for coming by. Appreciate it. Awesome having you, dude. Thanks, guys. <laughs> That's a wrap.